This video is a set of illustrations you can use with your students to make the concepts of quantum mechanics more concrete. Let's review for a moment first. Quantum mechanics describes the arrangement of electrons in atoms. Once we understand the arrangement of electrons, we can then predict reactivity of the various elements on the periodic table. Up to now we've been describing the arrangement or the, the structure of, of atoms to be having a central nucleus with protons and electrons and circling around the outside like planets around the Sun we have the electrons. Quantum mechanics will help us describe in greater detail this arrangement of electrons in atoms uh, around the nucleus of the atom. Quantum mechanics is divided into four different quantum numbers. I like to think of this as being like four chapters in a book. The book be, uh, being called quantum mechanics, each chapter related to one of the four quantum numbers. The first quantum number is called the principal quantum number. The principal quantum number says that the electrons are arranged in layers around the nucleus of the atom. Now, so far we've been kind of describing the arrangement of electrons as being in a single layer. However, the prime principal quantum number says that the electrons are arranged in layers. The quantum number goes on to say there can be up to seven layers of electrons around the nucleus of an atom. You might have your students refer to their periodic table, and then over on the left-hand side you can have them write in some numbers here. Next to hydrogen, this first series of elements across, we can put the number 1. And then the next series we can put 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. These numbers here then refer to the layers of electrons found in these elements of, of, found on the periodic table. Okay, A good illustration to describe how electrons are found in in layers around an atom is to use an apple. And what we like to do is is take that apple and then just we'll just slice right into it to show that the layers within the apple. And what we can see is that is that apples have a peel on the outside, then there's the fleshy part, then we have the core and on the inside we have the seeds. So like the apple, the electrons in atoms are arranged in layers. So if we look at our model here, instead of having just one uh, single layer of electrons, we have them in, in various layers, each circling around the nucleus of the atom, much like planets circle the sun. So our, prime, our principal quantum number says that the electrons are found in layers and we'll use the apple to describe that. We've got one, two, three, four layers here in the apple and uh, you can tell your students again that the electrons found on the periodic table can be found up, up to seven layers of electron. So that's the principal quantum number. Now the second quantum number which is kind of like the second chapter in your quantum mechanics book is called the orbital quantum number and the orbital quantum number says that these orbits or these electron pathways come in up to four different shapes. The primary uh, principal quantum number said that there's up to seven layers. The orbital quantum number now says that those layers are in different shapes and there are four different shapes. Uh, the first shape that you can describe with your students is spherical and using a ball is great to show them that uh, the pathway, the shape of the pathway of electrons can be shaped like a ball. So if we look at our model here, these electrons are traveling around the nucleus of the atom in a spherical ball shaped path. So the S is the indication lowercase s is used for the spherical. Uh, the second of the four shapes that electrons can be found is, is pear shape. Now I don't have any pears here, but 
if you do that ideal, uh, an object which resembles pair is a light bulb. And so uh, the electrons again are traveling in a pear shaped path and, and what uh, it's theorized to, to be like is you've got let me see if I can get I used to quit rolling here if you've got uh, these pear shaped orbits are actually in in a pair there's sets of them and I'm just putting these down here to keep them from rolling but the electrons then travel like this they come around through the nucleus or around the nucleus and then out again in another pear shaped path so, so far we've got S was for spherical shape. Now we're going to have lowercase p, which stands for these pear shaped orbits. All right? Now, the third shape of electrons that uh, chemists have described is referred to as the D shape or dumbbell shape. And uh, not very much is known about this shape. Uh, apparently, the, the electrons travel out, and they kind of have a little circle, and then they come back across, sort of like the pear shape, but uh, it's still different in that it's called the D or the dumbbell uh, shape of orbit. All right. So, so far we've had S for spherical, P was the pear shape, and we use light bulbs to represent, P was for the pear shape, uh, the D shaped orbit was the dumbbell shape. Now the fourth one is the F shape and uh, chemists have not fully described this shape uh, whatsoever. However, it's, it's theorized that it's, it exists. Um, the F shape, so uh, just to make it have, be a little more concrete for my students, I tell them the F stands for, not, not Nemo, but F for fish, uh, the fish shape. And I emphasize to them that this is definitely not uh, what the theorized shape is. It doesn't look like a fish, but it just gives them something concrete to uh, refer to. So we have the S was for spherical, P for pear, D for dumbbell, and then uh, the F shape was, quote, the, the fish shape. So in our quantum mechanics so far, uh, the first quantum number said that the electrons are in layers uh, like we like we used uh, the parts of the apple to uh, help visualize. Uh, the second quantum number, which is the orbital quantum number, said that the pathways uh, that the electrons follow are in up to four different shapes. We had the spherical, S, P pair, D dumbbell, and then F was the fish shape. Now the third quantum number, which is like the third chapter in our book, uh, refers to the pear-shaped orbits. So I'll get our uh, light bulbs here. And the third quantum number is called the magnetic quantum number. And what I uh, often do with my students is I take uh, a pair, a set of these light bulbs, and I, I show them that the pear-shaped can, can either be in this orientation or in this orientation or in this third orientation and we, those are referred to if you uh, uh, liken or refer back to a geometry or math class as the different axes uh, upon which you, you can draw upon and so we have we'd have the x-axis the y-axis and then the z-axis and so the third quantum number which is magnetic so since we're going in different directions I refer them back to the idea of a compass you know a magnetic compass that you can use to uh, when you're hiking uh, to help tell directions so this third quantum number the magnetic quantum number tells the direction or orientation in space of only these pear shaped orbits now the the spherical the dumbbell and the f-shape don't have different orientations it's only the pear shaped which is the magnetic quantum number now. All right, so let's let's review again. Uh, we said the principal quantum number talked about layers. We said there can be up to seven layers of electrons, and we use the apple to help uh, visualize layers of electrons. So if we look at our model here, we've got different layers uh, of electrons. The second quantum number, which was orbital quantum number, told us shape. We said there was S shape for spherical. P was for the pear shape, D was a dumbbell shape, and then F was 
F shape, or call it the fish. Um, then we talked about the magnetic quantum number, which we said only pertains to the pear-shaped orbits, and we said they can either fall in the in the X, the Y, or the Z orientation in space. And there's some diagrams in your book you can use to to show that. Uh, in that that Z one's kind of tricky. It's actually going in into the page of the book and and out the the opposite side. So that's three of the four quantum numbers. Now the fourth quantum number is called the spin quantum number and there's an activity that you can do with your students which makes this a, a memorable quantum number and it, in the text there it's called the dizzy electron game and let me get that set up here. Uh, the, in the, the fourth quantum number called the spin quantum number says that the electrons like to travel when possible in pairs. So in this case we've got one, two, three, four, five electrons, so this would be an atom of boron. And in the case of boron, the electrons, as they travel in these various shapes and various layers around the nucleus of the atom, like to travel with a partner. Okay, That's the first part of the spin quantum number. The second aspect of the spin quantum number says that within each pair now, one electron spins clockwise and the other one spins counterclockwise. So we have this opposite spinning going on of these electrons as they're traveling, whether it be a spherical shaped path or a pear, pear shaped path uh, around the nucleus of the atom. Uh, an activity you can do with your students is, let me clear our model over here, is to uh, position yourself uh, in the center of the classroom and then you'll want to move desk tables away so so you have a, a clear uh, play space here and then what you'll do is you'll have your students pair up and stand in a circle around you so let's just get some students here and we've got them in pairs it doesn't matter who's paired up it's it's just a more of a demonstration rather than any sort of uh, comp competitive type game. So let's say you've got your eight students here and you've got them paired up. Now uh, you will emphasize again the idea of the spin quantum number and what you have your students pretend is that they are uh, electrons and you're going to be positioned in the nucleus of the atom. They're going to travel in a spherical shaped path about you and as they travel they won't fall down. Hang on there. As they travel about you in this spherical shaped path, one member of each pair will turn in a clockwise or spin in a clockwise fashion and the other one will spin in a counterclockwise fashion. And so uh, when you give the signal to go, they'll start slowly moving around the circle. We'll just in the spherical shaped path so we can emphasize this is S shape again and you'll have one of them spin clockwise the other one will be spinning clockwise counterclockwise and they'll move and keep spinning and keep moving and eventually they'll come back to where they start in the class in, in the, the beginning of the activity. Now you want to caution your students don't get going too fast some get too dizzy and then fall down and hurt themselves uh, but this uh, activity I'll kind of get them back here, uh, emphasizes or uh, helps them remember the idea of the fourth quantum number, which is the spin quantum number. The electrons, when possible, travel with a partner. Now, uh, if you do, you know, this would be an even, so we've got two, four, six, this would be like an atom of oxygen here with its eight electrons. If we had uh, atomic number seven, which would be, we'll just let this guy stand aside, this would be seven electrons, so this would be like an atom of nitrogen. Uh, this one lone electron continues to spin, but it's going to travel as a lone electron. And we'll find later on in the course uh, some interesting things about these lone, uh, lone electrons as they travel in the atom. So, let's uh, review this, this whole set of uh, 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 demonstrations here that you can use for uh, describing quantum mechanics. Uh, we say that quantum mechanics describes the arrangement of electrons in an atom. Uh, once we knew the arrangement of electrons, then we can uh, predict reactivity 
of the various elements on the periodic table. We said that there were four quantum numbers, kind of like the four chapters in a book. Uh, the first was called the uh, principal quantum number, and it said, uh, like an apple, the electrons are in layers. They're found in layers, kind of like the peel of an onion or uh, something like that. Uh, you can use uh, to describe uh, the arrangement of uh, how the electrons are in layers. Uh, the second quantum number was the orbital quantum orbital quantum number and it said that the electrons various shapes uh, we used the ball to represent uh, the spherical shape S, the P was the pear shaped and we used the light bulbs uh, D was the dumbbell shape and then quotes F was for the fish shape uh, the third quantum number was called the magnetic quantum number, so like a compass. Uh, magnetic tells about different directions, and we talked about the pear-shaped orbits as being in the X and the Y, and then in the Z orientation in space. That was the magnetic quantum number. And finally, the fourth quantum number was the spin quantum number. Uh, we said that the electrons, as they travel uh, around the nucleus of an atom, like to travel with a partner in pairs if possible or one spinning clockwise and the other one spinning counterclockwise as they move to create this cloud of electrons uh, moving around uh, the nucleus of the atom. So this is a set of demonstrations you can use uh, to help describe quantum mechanics and hopefully make it a little more concrete for your students.